Hi, everyone. Good morning. We're just waiting for a few people to come in. I think there's already about 120 of you who've joined us. Hello. Hi, good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. <laughs> Lots of thumbs up and waves. Looking forward to the session, Esther. Yes. Looking forward to getting to know all of you as well. Welcome for those of you who are joining. I think we've still got people coming in so far. All right. Full of great gratitude. <laughs> That's a good one, Tan. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. I managed to blur the background, but not able to put sort of like a background. <laughs> so you might see my cat uh, roaming around here and there. All right. Good morning. Nice to see all of you today. All right. So we've got about 150 people um, on the call today and still going. All right. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning, Florence. All right. Okay. All right, so very good morning to all of you today. Um, hopefully you've had a good start uh, to your Thursday um, and I'm looking forward to getting to know um, all of you during our session for today. Um, so before we begin, uh, my name is Jess and I am the presenter. Uh, for today's session, we don't have a host, so I'll be also hosting and taking your questions as well. All right, so just some housekeeping um, rules before we begin. If you have any questions um, that you want to ask me, feel free to just put it into the chat box. You can type uh, the at Jess uh, before you write in your questions um, so I can directly receive it. But if you guys want to kind of have discussions or conversations with each other in the chat box, you are more than welcome to do that as well. Okay. Um, if you do want to remain anonymous uh, throughout the session, you can always drop me a private message. Um, so you can click on the um, drop down box just below the word chat and you would see the private section and you can drop me a private message as well. Okay. Um, so at the end of today's session, you would be getting a handout of the presentation. Uh, you would be able to download it on the handout tab at the top uh, on your right hand side. Uh, but you also be receiving an email uh, with the PDF version of the webinar. Okay. All right. So I think we can get started. We still have people coming in. Um, yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Okay, so just a brief introduction about myself for those of you who have not met me before. Uh, my name is Jess and I am a mental health coach with Naluri. Um, so I am a registered and licensed uh, psychotherapist. Um, so my background is um, I have a master's in counseling, but you also notice that my bachelor's was in physiotherapy. Right. So you might be wondering, because I do get this question asked a lot, you know, how did you do the switch from the medical industry to the mental health industry? So really long story, but in short, I um, was really passionate about helping people and often found that while I was treating patients, um, they came in with a lot of mental health concerns as well. Right. And so I never really felt fully equipped. This is when I decided, you know, I'm going to, you know, do more research and, you know, get some qualification. And that's that's what I did. And so it's a 10 year um, in the making decision. But here I am um, now practicing as a psychotherapist. Right. Um, so I typically specialize in trauma focused therapy. 
just in case you're wondering. So that would be um, cases like, you know, um, abuse cases or even childhood traumas, uh, PTSD, depression and anxiety. Uh, but I also do a lot of work in the marriage and couples therapy as well. Okay, um, in case you're wondering um, the type of therapy that I use, uh, predominantly would be CBT. Has anyone heard of CBT before or familiar with the term CBT? Yeah, so CBT actually stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. So this is a type of therapy that we use um, in treatment of people who have you know, struggles with their thoughts, yeah, their cognition, their way of thinking, all right? Um, and then you can see EMDR, which just stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing, which is also another form of therapy um, that I use in treatment for trauma therapy. So in case you're wondering, you can do a little bit more research about that. Um, but this is the area that I tend to focus on. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of self-reflection and get you guys to kind of take a moment um, to just reflect on a couple of questions that I'm going to be asking you. All right. So the first question that I want to ask all of you is on a scale of 1 to 10, how grateful do you think you are in general? Right. So meaning 1 is not really grateful and 10, you're very grateful. So in general, how do you, how often do you practice gratitude or do you practice gratitude all right how do you where do you rate yourself all right so i see some people saying nine ten wow <laughs> eight seven eight point two five ten very exact number <laughs> all right ten nine okay so I see a lot of you do practice um, gratitude in general. Seven. Okay. So nothing below five, I noticed. 8.8, .8, Sarah says. <laughs> right. So I think you guys are a really good bunch of grateful people, right? A lot of things to be grateful for. So I think I hope that, you know, by the end of today's session, you have some key takeaways um, and kind of like, I guess, a reminder in practicing gratitude okay now the second question i'm going to ask all of you is what are you grateful for today right today what are you most grateful for okay health and family being alive <laughs> yes definitely still alive alive and well alive and striving food okay that's a good one right my boyfriend a little bit of everything esther says having a job a family my daughter's smile wow that's a really nice one family day a good breakfast early this morning able to wake up and come to work my son my cats <laughs> Wow. Parking. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, Farah said parking. <laughs> we do take it for granted sometimes, right? Recovering from illness, health and family, being a lot alive. Good sleep. Okay, being appreciated. Right, the food that I have. Thank you for sharing. I think this is so great. So it kind of takes us, um, you know, a few minutes to kind of think about it and realize, wow, we actually have a lot of things to be grateful for, right? Um, manager in a good mood, <laughs> no one says, family and friends. So there's so many beautiful things that we often forget to be grateful for, right? Because we just live in this fast paced world and we go through the rat race and we don't realize that we need to stop and take a moment and really be thankful for all of the little things that we have. I insist this session, right? So this is a really good reminder. So let's kind of get into gratitude, right? And really understand what is gratitude all about and what does gratitude actually mean? We often hear it, we often talk about it, but what does it actually mean? Okay, so according to the Oxford Dictionary, gratitude is the quality of being thankful, 
readiness to show appreciation and returning kindness, right? So it's really an act and practice that we kind of have to cultivate, right? Being thankful is a really good point as well. And I think oftentimes we mix the two up, right? We think that being thankful is gratefulness or being grateful is thankful but actually there is quite a big difference between the two now when we say we are thankful or we are being thankful what we're doing in that moment is we're acknowledging something someone has given us or we're acknowledging something that someone has done for us right so that response is usually automatic and it's usually momentarily in that moment right so for an example, when we you know, walk through an office building and someone holds the door for us, right? We often say, thank you. I hope we do, because I realize in Malaysia, not many people actually say thank you when the door is being opened for us, right? Or um, you know, a stranger kind of allowing you to stand in queue in front of them, right? And we say thank you. So it's something that we're doing to acknowledge that person. We're also doing in that moment, which is so automatic, um, but it only stays in that moment. Now, what is gratefulness? What is gratitude? So when we say we are grateful, we're actually expressing gratitude because we feel deeply moved by that person, by that thing or by that experience. So it's not momentarily and it's not just in that moment, but it's sort of like a really big emotion that we're feeling. So it's a lingering emotion that rises within us, right? It could be a feeling of happiness. It could be a feeling of peace. It could be a feeling of clarity, but it's that lingering emotion that is still actively there as we reflect on that specific event or series that has positively affected us, right? So it's a longer duration and it's not just in that moment, but when we think about it, it's like, wow, there's so much to be grateful and thankful for, right? So let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, um, it was around Christmas time. Um, and I was I was driving and I noticed there was this um, bike, a motorbike that was um, sort of following me, right? Um, and I thought I had, you know, gotten rid of, of the bike by stopping in a petrol station. But it turns out the bike was actually following me home, okay? And so when I arrived home and as I was about to get out of my car, my doors were still locked, as I was about to get out of my car, the same person that I had seen on the bike was standing next to me on the passenger side, right? Um, and he was aggressively trying to get into my car. He was trying to open the door. He was banging on the glass. Um, and when I looked over, he had a knife in his hand, right? So it was a very scary experience for me um, in that moment. Um, but to cut the story short, um, nothing happened. I was safe. And um, after a few minutes, that person actually went away, right? And I managed to call my, my spouse. My husband came down. And by the time um, that happened, you know, he was, he was already gone, right? So as I walked back into the house and as I ponder of it, and even as I think about it today, there is a huge amount of gratefulness that I, that I feel uh, within my heart, right? Because I'm so grateful nothing happened to me right physically because this person had a weapon they could have you know decided to hurt me or even damage my car but thankfully nothing happened to me nothing happened to my family um, and in that moment i was able to you know spend christmas of course a little bit traumatized a little bit taken aback really fearful um, but just so grateful for the life that I had, right, to spend with my family. So in this example, we really see how gratitude actually uh, makes us feel content. It's a feeling that kind of grows and it is a practice that we have, right? And sometimes it's really unexpected. This event that happened to me was so unexpected, right? I would never have thought that on Christmas week that this would happen. And so as I'm talking, I hope you're thinking about different instances in your life where you have actually experienced certain events, maybe positive or even negative, 
but you still think about it to this day because you're so thankful and grateful for that person or that experience or that situation. Yeah. Okay. So now when we talk about gratitude, we have to understand there are two stages to gratitude right? The first stage is called the acknowledgement stage, right? This is where we we often forget to do, right? We, we just kind of jump into the second stage, which is just recognizing. But the first stage is always acknowledging, right? So what we're doing in that moment is that we're acknowledging that we've received something that is special to us. We've received something that gratifies us, um, by this presence or by this person or even acknowledging the effort that the giver has done or given to us, right? So we are verbalizing, we are vocalizing. I think a lot of times when we receive certain things or when um, our partners or our friends do things for us, we actually forget to acknowledge um, the efforts that they put in, right? I think sometimes when um, you know, for example, like breakfast is made for us or the car, uh, petrol, you know, the petrol in the car is already filled, you know, for us. We forget to actually acknowledge um, and, you know, thank the person who has actually uh, done something for us, right? Um, and then the second stage is when we recognize. At this stage, we are recognizing the goodness that this person or this thing has you know, or we're experiencing this thing in our lives and who to thank for it. So we are grateful, perhaps even for our the little things in life, like our children, you know, the smile on our uh, cat's face when they have a treat or even our creator, right? Um, a lot of gratefulness is actually tied to our belief system. So how we see the world, how we see God, um, that is also a very big, um, part as well, right? So to this two-stage process, we start to recognize the fortune of everything that improves our lives and ourselves. So I think this is a really good point for us to remember that there are actually two stages of gratitude. One is acknowledgement and one is recognizing. All right. Okay. So we go on to another point portion, which is called the iceberg of gratitude. Has anyone heard of this before? The iceberg of gratitude? Yes? Oh, okay. Neural has. Awesome. Heard of it before. Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of you guys know. First time. Sarah says first time. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So for those of you who have not heard of the iceberg of gratitude, um, I'm going to explain it to you. So when we look at an iceberg, right, um, in the ocean, we think of an iceberg in the ocean. Uh, what we typically see is the things that are above the surface, right, which is the, the iceberg itself, right? And that really represents the life circumstances, the events and experiences in our life that we can visibly see, right? So that could mean, you know, our education, um, health, it could be um, even our careers or a promotion that we recently got, right? So these are all the visible bigger things in life. But when we actually look at an iceberg, right? Underneath the surface, there is still so much to that iceberg. And it's usually a lot of times bigger than what we see on the top, right? And underneath the iceberg are the representation of simple things that go unnoticed, right? So for example, um, you know, spending time and having a really deep and meaningful conversation with a friend, um, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful experience when we can really connect with people or even having just a bowl um, of ice cream or even just going for a walk uh, or being in sunshine or reading a book that you've been wanting to read for the longest time, right? So I think this is a really good reminder for us to consciously express gratitude because it helps us grow this daily gratitude practice that is above 
uh, and beyond the surface level. So I want you to kind of take a moment to kind of think and reflect on your life right now. Just imagine your life is this huge iceberg before you and all the things that we see um, on the top are things that we pretty much, you know, are very visible to us, right? But when we look beneath all of that, what are some of the things that you are grateful for? Maybe you guys can share with me um, in the chat box. What are some of the smaller, simple, everyday pleasures that we often don't pay a lot of attention to? Can you guys share with me? Okay, Jackie says, having a great cup of coffee during raining. Oh, that's a good one. Right. Grateful to see my healthy cat <laughs> in the background today. <laughs> right. Getting a good morning text, having, having support from your maid, getting a seat on the train. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Able to sleep a little bit longer in the morning, can walk fresh air and healthy lungs, enough food on the table, no need to go through the traffic jam of work, Ung says, right? When the train comes on time, Neely says, right? Tan says, plants, green, clean air, cool. <laughs> Able to work from home, Jason says, that's always a really good pleasure. <laughs> right, sipping a cup of hot coffee. Right, able to eat my favorite breakfast. Is that nasi lemak, <laughs> Christine? Mm. Right, having a helpful husband, right? Able to listen to my favorite music. So there's so many things that we often um, don't focus on, right? And so we really have to take this as a, pra a practice, a grateful practice. Um, to cultivate in our daily lives, right? So I hope that this is a good reminder as we talk about the iceberg of gratitude. Okay. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about gratitude and positive psychology. I'm not sure if any of you have heard about positive psychology before. Um, it is a very common type of therapy um, that psychologists or psychotherapists, counselors tend to use, right? Okay, so let's have a look at the connection between positive psychology and gratitude. So what is positive psychology? It is a type of a therapy, as I mentioned earlier, for me, I predominantly use CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, but a lot of therapists, including myself, we also use positive psychology depending on the type of client that we're working with or even the issues that the client brings uh, to the table. All right, so positive psychology emphasizes a lot on the meaning and deep satisfaction um, in life, not just the fleeting happiness, not the things that kind of, you know, you can kind of pay money and then it's you're happy for that one, two days and then it goes away. And a lot that is found from identifying one's strengths and finding meaning and purpose. So Dr. Martin Seligman, who actually you know, founded this whole concept, he found that in therapy, a lot of the focus was put on trauma or pain or suffering and all of the negative parts of life and not enough emphasis on the happiness, the well-being and the strengths of a person, right? So this is where positive psychology comes in because what we're doing is that we're really focusing on purpose and meaning in your life. What are the strengths that you have personally, right? Of course, having said that, there is a disclaimer. Um, although the focus on positive psychology is on happiness and fulfillment, it does not mean that people are advised to push away the negative emotions altogether, okay? So we still kind of have to find that balance in between, right? We don't just completely dump the negative and just focus on the positive as well. Now, based on a lot of research, so if you guys do, you know, a little bit of Google search at the end of today's session on gratitude, there is tons and tons of research on how gratefulness is so beneficial for our physical health, our mental well-being, and even our emotional well-being as well, 
right? So there's a lot of research done, and these are some of the concepts or theories that I managed to find that we often, you know, forget and need to be reminded about. So with gratefulness and the practice of gratefulness, we realize that happiness is one of the causes of good things in life and also promotes more happiness. So when someone is grateful and happy and it becomes a daily practice in their life, you realize that they are a lot more positive. They are a really nice person to talk to. They are usually a very optimistic person. Um, and it's so nice. They're like a ray of sunshine every time you talk to them, right? We also realize that religion matters, as I mentioned earlier, whether you believe in a higher power or you believe in God, a lot of times that belief system that we have in terms of being grateful for being alive, being grateful for, you know, a healthy lungs or the oxygen that we, we, we breathe comes from our creator, right? So a lot of times religion is also really much tied into how grateful that we feel. Work also matters in terms of making life worth living as long as we are engaged and draw meaning and purpose from it. So going back again to that sense of meaning, that sense of purpose in our life, because sometimes we forget to engage, right? We forget or we lose sight of why we're working so hard or why we're making so much of money or why we're doing this and doing that. We don't take that time to really focus um, on being present in that moment. Money has diminishing returns on our happiness, but after a certain point, we can buy some happiness by spending money on other people. So as much as money is important, but what about also spending money on other people? Because that is when we feel that sense of gratefulness and appreciation. And like I mentioned, it is that lingering emotion and that lingering feeling versus, oh, I'm really thankful for you. So I'm going to buy you this handbag, for example. Okay. And lastly, the heart matters more than the head, meaning that things like empathy and compassion are just as important as critical thinking. So we put a lot of emphasis on being really rational in certain circumstances, not showing our emotions. But we realize that through a lot of research, empathy and compassion are equally as important as critical thinking. Okay. All right, so we're going on to the next portion. Now we're going to look at the correlation between gratitude and mental health, okay? Just because I am in the mental health industry. So what we realize is that when people are grateful and what happens is that it stimulates and regulates the flow of neurotransmitters such as dopamine. So we all know dopamine is the happy hormone, right? Uh, Non-epinephrine, which is the energy hormone and oxytocin, which is the love hormone, right? While reducing cortisol, which is the stress hormone, right? So when we actually start practicing gratefulness and gratitude in our daily life, we actually see a change in our mental well-being as well, right? So we see a decrease in your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. We see also an increase in your happy hormones and your energy hormones. You become a lot more calmer, right? It boosts your concentration. It makes you have healthier, better decision-making skills, as well as productivity, right? So these are just some assessments um, that you can, you know, check out online. Um, completely free assessments, just one, I think about five to six questions if you're interested in doing some tests and finding out where you rate on the gratitude scale as well. Okay, now I really want to share this really interesting model. I think the PERMA model, I'm not sure if anyone has heard of it before, um, but it is so, so essential in terms of human well-being and thriving uh, and striving as well, right? So this is a model that was discovered by uh, Dr. Martin Seligman, right? And he believes that these are the five pillars um, that are essential for our well-being. And they're really easy, straightforward, and so easy to remember as well. So let's kind of go through this um, together. 
So the first one that we're looking at is positive emotions, right? So when we talk about positive emotions, we're talking about the past, we're talking about the present, and we're talking about the future, okay? So when we think of positive emotions in the past, what we're doing is we're trying to cultivate gratitude. Right, So we're looking back on past incidents or events in our life, like I did at the start of our presentation today, um, and really seeing things that has happened in our life that we can actually be grateful for, right? And when we focus on emotions within the present, what we're doing is we're savoring things or being present in that moment. So enjoying the finer things in life, you know, focusing on the smaller things that we often forget about, right? Rather than the bigger picture or the glitz and the glam, we're actually looking at all the smaller things and savoring the little things that we have um, on our day to day. And then lastly, when we talk about positive emotions in the future, we're talking about building hope. Right? We're talking about a practice that we want to cultivate for ourselves, but also for maybe our kids, maybe even our spouse, maybe our family members, and you know, build that hope as well within the family. Okay. Now, a second one is engagement. So this is a pretty interesting um, concept, and I know all of us have experienced it, including myself. Um, engagement means we are fully absorbed into that moment, right? Where self-awareness goes out the door. We don't even think about being self-aware or being conscious of this and that. Time stops, so which means to say you don't check your phone, you don't check the watch, you just be present in that moment. You are savoring um, that time that you have doing what you love, and that's called the flow. Right. So, for example, being involved in a good conversation, um, reading a book that you love or even fixing furniture. Right. So for me, when I get into the zone of fixing um, furniture, um, all time stops. <laughs> so I'm fully focused. I'm absorbed. You know, I am really enjoying myself because I am engaging in that specific activity and I'm being present with myself. Right. So this is one of the ways that we can actually use in terms of being present and savoring that moment of gratefulness. Now, the third one is relationships, right? So we are social beings. We have to understand that as humans, we are all created to socialize and to connect with people. Even for those of you who say that you're an introvert, you also do need a place to connect to people. Right? So developing strong relationships help to enable our capacity to love, to have compassion, to have kindness and empathy. And when I say relationships, I'm not referring to a big group of friends, right? It could even be someone special, one or two friends, close friends that you can trust, that you can um, talk to and have that connection with and really share your heart and your feeling and express yourself without feeling like you are judged, right? And really be honest in those conversations. So relationships are so, so important to us. The fourth one is meaning. Now, this is a really big part of us that we often tend to forget or we don't really practice. And that is the sense of meaning and purpose right sense of meaning and purpose comes from the sense of belonging right belonging to a certain group of people belonging to an organization belonging to a family right and in this process when we have the sense of belonging we are also looking above and beyond ourselves so we're not just focusing on us in that moment but we're also focusing on the bigger picture, something that is beyond and above ourselves, our tribe. Yes, thank you, Andy, for saying that. Exactly. And that could mean even like, you know, in religious groups, for example, maybe you um, join a type of group where you are into going and serving the community. Maybe you are doing some gotong royong, um, which is, you know, some cleanup 
uh, around your neighborhood with a group of friends or group of neighbors. Um, it could be getting involved in politics, if that's what you're passionate about. It could also be getting involved in sciences, right? Um, sustainability or even recycling or even energy. There's so many um, communities that we can be a part of. And being a part of a community is so, so important because it gives us that sense of purpose and meaning. And that is very, very essential in our well-being in day to day and as we live our life as well. Okay. And then lastly is our accomplishments. So we're not going to sit here and brag about our accomplishments, but really that pursuit of achieving things that we did not think that you were capable of gives us that sense of success, right? So maybe engaging in a in a in a sport that you never thought that you were capable of. Right. Maybe signing yourself up for a marathon or half a marathon, just challenging yourself to complete um, that on its own is already a very big achievement. Right. So I think this is a really interesting um, model for us to kind of take home. It's really easy. Perma, positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaning and accomplishments. OK. All right, moving on. Okay, so now we're going to go into the part on how to show gratitude. We kind of talked a little bit about what is gratitude, the, the stages of gratitude. Um, we also understood the iceberg of gratitude. But when we actually talk about, you know, reflecting on this whole topic of gratitude, we want to be able to show gratitude. So you might be asking me, well, how do we do this, Jess? So these are the four ways in which that we can show gratitude. The first one is a gratitude journal. Can I just ask how many of us um, do journaling? Does anyone do journaling actively? Do you love journaling? Have you tried journaling but you hate it? Okay, so Siwu Hua says you do, Anna, Nurul Sarah, I journal when I have negative emotions, right? Plan to, yeah, yeah, used to <laughs> meditate and reflect. So journaling, yes, awesome. Call it a gratitude journal. Andrea says that, awesome. Okay, this is really good. I'm so glad to hear that some of you do practice journaling and you also know the importance of it and for those of you who haven't or for those of you who used to maybe this is a really good reminder to kind of try it or get back into that habit of journaling right so journaling is so so and this is coming from someone who has practiced gratitude journaling right so having a specific little um, book or planner that you can input on a daily basis the things that you were grateful for for the day. So for those of you who have never done journaling, it might be really daunting to kind of think like, oh my gosh, I have to sit and think and write. But in that process of sitting and thinking is when you're going through that two stages of gratitude, is when you're acknowledging and you're recognizing. And that is so, so impactful there's a lot of research that's been done on people who actually practice gratitude journaling and how that has significantly changed their mental health as well as their physical health. So a journal entry could start with maybe three times a week, right? So if it's really overwhelming for you, try maybe alternate days or maybe Monday, Wednesday and Friday and just see how you go with that. Just see if you can kind of cultivate um, a practice over time and once you start doing it you realize it becomes a habit and sooner or later it's like a daily thing that you do you don't actually need to wait till the end of the day to come home and write in your journal you can actually do it um, on your phone wherever you are right how long do you spend on writing the journal? So I would say 10 to 15 minutes. So it's not a diary. It's not where you sit and you write, um, you know, what happened at the start of the day to the end of the day. You're just going to be listing down maybe just some of the items that you were grateful for that day, 
right? So maybe 10 to 15 minutes would be more than enough time to do that. Okay, so I really hope that you guys will be encouraged to, to get on track <laughs> with your gratitude journal, right? Thanks, Jason. So another one is a gratitude visit. So how many of us have actually taken time to go and appreciate and visit someone just to show our gratitude towards them, right? I think next week is a, I think, public holiday on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, or Thursday. So you have some time in your hands um, where you can go and actually visit someone and just show your appreciation for them. It could be a sibling, it could be a friend in need that you've been kind of procrastinating for some time. Um, it could also be um, a family, maybe your parents, you kind of not spent a lot of time with your parents and so maybe going and just spending time with them as well would be, would be really good. Um, I have a friend who, who works for a company and every year they do this really amazing event uh, just to appreciate uh, the cleaners uh, in the office, right? So uh, what they do is they actually prepare like a lunch, uh, just a meal uh, for all of them to come and have a meal and then we um, do different events and games and then they get prizes, they get gift bags, and this is a really great way to kind of appreciate people uh, for the things that they do. Can you imagine as foreigners, you're living abroad in different countries and they often go unrecognized, unnoticed. So just having that space to appreciate them, you know, is so, so meaning, meaningful. And I've actually seen those people, um, you know, in that luncheon and they're just so grateful and so happy and so appreciative is that like you can't rub off the smile um, from their face. So maybe that's something that you guys can also think about as well. Okay. Yes. Do you actually read back your gratitude journal to reflect? Yes. Um, Isreen has a question. Definitely. So another great reason for having a gratitude journal or a journal in general is that we can actually go back to the different entries that we have put in and see how far we've come or see how far we've grown. I've actually done that myself um, when I backtrack many years um, when I used to journal, when I used to have a gratitude journal, um, I look at all the things that had happened or things that I've experienced in my life and I feel like, wow, in the last one to two years, so much has happened and it really brings forth that gratitude feeling as well. So that's a really good question. So for those of you who are active journalists, um, this is also a great way to kind of track back uh, to your previous um entries and to reflect on that as well okay right so i am quickly going to get you guys to do this exercise um just scan the qr code that you see on your screen what you're going to do is write a gratitude letter to your future self right so it's just a really short portion part that you can kind of click in right and type in your letter to yourself Right, so you can choose to send it back to you six months from now, one month from now, one year from now, three months, three years from now. Um, and I think that'd be a really good exercise for you to just try it. So just take a moment, scan the QR code that you see on your screen. Remember to click the free version, right? Not the one with the future me, the free version um, that you'll see on your phone. I'll just give you guys a couple of minutes. It's a really interesting exercise. All right, sure. I think Mika, you can help us paste the link in the chat box as well. Let's give us a moment.
Okay. Hi, Mika, are you there? Could you help us uh, share the link in the chat box? Yes, thank you so much. All right, for those of you using your phones, just feel free to click on to the uh, link. All right, has anyone completed the letter? If you have, just give me a thumbs up so I know that we can move on. Complete it. Yes, thank you, Alice. Thanks, Esther Dan. Awesome. Thanks for making me feel something today. Really needed. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad it was helpful for you. Okay. All right. So for those of you who need a little bit more time, just feel free to continue it and you can, you know, have access to the link as well. Uh, it's really, really helpful, okay? Um, and lastly, I would like to actually share um, is meditation, right? So meditation is something that's really helpful. Um, I was thinking of, I think we're running out of time, but if possible, I think kind of reflecting and also taking that time for yourself. I think earlier someone says they practice meditation and reflection, so good job on that. Um, Awesome. Thank you, Nuro, for saying, never know, I'll be so touched writing to myself. It's a really good exercise, right? Yeah, and imagine receiving that letter after the duration that you've, you've put to yourself. It comes as an email to you. Right. Okay. So as I was saying, meditation is also another great way to show gratitude, just being in that moment, focusing. For those of you who don't know how to do meditation, you can actually search um, podcasts or even scripts on Spotify uh, and even on YouTube as well. So you might be um, you know, better with meditation where someone is actually speaking and there's audio versus sort of being with yourself. That can be a bit of a challenge for those of you who have never tried meditation before. Okay. All right. So moving on, I'm just going to end very quickly with this part and then we'll have a Q&A session. So we've heard a lot about toxic masculinity or toxic positivity, but have we actually heard of toxic gratitude, right? We don't really hear much of this concept, right? So let's talk about this interesting uh, topic, which is toxic gratitude. So here are the three signs that you've been doing without even noticing that you're probably practicing toxic gratitude. So the first one is the feeling that something isn't working for you anymore, but you keep dismissing your desires, right? So I think this is really helpful to work with a therapist for those of you who kind of find yourself often getting stuck in this trap of being um, so positive and so grateful that you start dismissing your own needs and wants and desires. So working with a therapist can be really helpful because the therapist is able to identify and point out some of these negative behaviors that you might not even be aware of doing at all. Maybe it's just a subconscious thing and you don't even realize that you're doing. So feel free, I think your companies, to provide um, therapies, remote therapy sessions with Naluri. So if you're interested, you know, talk to a therapist about um, some of these desires that you've been suppressing. Now, secondly, when gratitude that you are expressing invalidates your feelings. So you focus so much on the good and the positive that you actually forgot to validate yourself for some of the real things that are happening in the situation. So for example, someone could be being very hurtful towards you or the circumstances are such that you are not in the best position, but you only choose to focus on the positive, forgetting that the reality of things is that you yourself are also being put in a very difficult situation, right? So when we do that, we are invalidating our own feelings. Okay, and lastly, we use gratitude as an excuse to stay in a situation that isn't serving you. I think all of us have done this, including myself, right? We just tell ourselves, you know, it's okay, we'll just 
suck it up, you know, I should be grateful, I should be happy for this opportunity. Um, and you just stay in that situation that may not be the most beneficial or even healthy for us. So these are some of the common narratives I'm sure we have said to ourselves or we've heard someone who may have said this before. I'm getting paid. A lot of people are out of work right now, so I should just really be happy and grateful that I have a job, right? Especially during pandemic or COVID, right? This is a very common narrative that I often heard from my clients, right? I don't want to be greedy, so I don't need to negotiate for more money at work. Right? We feel really bad to ask for more things. We feel really bad if we were to assert ourselves, right? And ask for what we want. Um, I should be grateful that I get to work from home now so that I don't need to ask for these other things that I need, right? So we kind of do a bit of bargaining here, right? Uh, working from home, so I guess I don't ask for other things, lah, right? Let me not... Uh, burden my boss or burden with more um, with more requests, right? Well, I really should just say nobody is perfect, right? We've heard a lot of this, especially in relationships, right? We kind of stay in relationships that may not be beneficial for us because we feel like, yep, you know, I, should, I deserve this kind of treatment and no one is perfect in the end. And lastly, maybe this person forgot my birthday or doesn't want to make me coffee in the morning, but it's better than being alone. It's better than nothing, right? So this is where we kind of put ourselves in a very, um, you know, in a, in a little box, right? We're not really asking for what we deserve or what we want because we believe that we're troubling that person. So take a moment, even as we kind of end our session for today, do we really practice um, toxic gratitude, right? And just to be aware and realize that um, sometimes we actually do it without even realizing it as well, okay? All right, so I'm going to end with a quote, which is by John Ockberg. Um, it says, gratitude is the ability to experience life as a gift. Right? So I think this is a really wonderful quote and I hope for those of you who enjoyed today's session, um, I hope there are some key takeaways that you got. Um, and if you have any questions, just feel free to put it into the chat box. Or if you want, you can send me a private um, message so you can click on the right hand side chat, you'll see a drop down um, arrow this is public you can click on private and send me an anonymous message as well thank you so much yes you're welcome i hope you enjoyed the session no problem thanks Anne. toxic gratitude is it a good or bad thing it is not a good thing to practice Shafira. Yeah, it's something that we want to kind of stay away from. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the session. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining everyone. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> yes, my cat is meowing. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Great to see all of you. Great to hear you. <clears throat> Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Yes, so Eve says, if we deliver too much gratitude to someone, would this impact anything? Definitely. So when we are too grateful, what we're doing is we're practicing that toxic gratitude, right? It's when we're not putting our needs before uh, someone else, right? And I think that's a really important part to kind of ask ourselves, why are we doing that? what is the reason that we tend to put other people's needs before our needs, right? What is the reason that we tend to focus on other people's desires versus our desires, 
right? Okay. Right. How do you stay positive and grateful when you're in an environment that sometimes pulls your emotion down? Okay, so this is a really interesting question because I understand this person is saying that um, as much as you're trying to stay positive, but the environment that you're in is constantly just so toxic, it's pulling you, it's dragging you down. So this is a question that you've got to ask yourself. Is it worth continuing to be in this environment? Is it something that you think that you could withstand? Or is it something that you think you can kind of um, pull through and, and it's not going to affect you emotionally or physically or even mentally, right? So that's a really good question to ask yourself. And why is it important for you to continually stay in that environment and put yourself in a position where you're constantly being teared down, right? You might need a session for the future. Sure, Esther, no problem. Right. <laughs> Love the background. Any good reads? I have a book. Um, let me just double check. I have a title that I can share with you guys if I get to find it in time. I'm just getting the book for you. Okay, I found it. I'm going to type it into the chat box. It's called the... It is a really good book um, by Dr. Robert um, he does so much extensive research um, on gratitude. He is a PhD holder, but he just focuses on gratitude research. So he's an amazing um, author as well. Robert. Okay, all right. So I've typed it into the chat box. Ishwari, you asked for any recommendations based on today's topic. So have a look. Um, it's called A Little Book of Gratitude by Dr. Robert A. Emons. Right, any podcast? Um, Mel Gibson is a really good person to listen to. Mel Gibson, she has a podcast on gratitude. Not sure if you've heard of her before, but she's really famous on Spotify. Um, she talks about gratitude in a different way as well. Um, and she actually covers quite a big uh, portion of her podcast on uh, toxic gratitude. So that's pretty interesting if you can check that out as well. Okay. All right. So we've come to the end of our session for today. Um, thank you everyone for being so attentive and being so lovely. I hope that the session was helpful in terms of kind of reminding us of certain things to be grateful for. Um, and I hope um, you weren't too distracted by my cat. I'm sure he also entertained you really well. Yep, that's a good book. Um, Andrian, you've mentioned the book, The Alchemist by Paolo. It's a really good book as well. Thank you for sharing. So have a good rest of your day today. I will speak to you guys soon. Um, thank you so much for joining the session. You will get a handout um, that will be emailed to you at the end of today's session. Uh, on today's presentation. So have a great day, everyone, and take care, and see you. Bye.